Hey everybody, I'm Jim and this is Ricky. And in this video, we're gonna talk about how to find inexpensive stock photos for your blog posts. Stock photos are something that's really easy to kind of skim over when you're starting your blog. Um, and a lot of people just try to find free images using Flickr, Creative Commons images, um, or things like that. And we don't really recommend doing that. I actually think the images have a lot to do with the success of your website. And so um, we have a little bit of a different approach to finding uh, images for blog posts. Yeah, it can be really tempting to even just skip images up front. Mm -hmm. and, and honestly, the first couple weeks when you're just writing articles, nobody's coming to your site yet anyway. No big deal. Um, and so, yeah, getting the content up, and, and by content, I'm talking more about the articles, the words, getting that up from day one, that's gonna be important because it's gonna take Google a while to get you to rank. But pretty quick there, it's it's a good idea to try to get some good photos on your site. Um, it just, I don't know, it adds so much to your site. I, it, I don't know if you've, if you've seen a lot of blogs out there that just have, they don't have photos on them or or one in every three articles has a featured image and you know, you read an article it's and it's- fun to read. The only images, I see, I see these articles all the time where the only images on the entire webpage are ads. Mm -hmm. And it drives me crazy. It doesn't add anything to, to the content itself. So. Um, don't skip the photos if you need to postpone it a week or two because you just paid for hosting and, and you don't want to pay a bunch for stock images fine a week or two is probably okay but you do need to get those images up on your site so we like a blend yeah we like a blend of 50% stock images and 50% photos that you've taken uh -huh. even if you're a bad photographer it's fine Almost all of the websites that I take on my website, wherever it is, oh, you, you are it, you're my cell phone, um, are, I just take with my iPhone. Yeah. Um, and you know, I try to do a decent job, but it's obvious it's an iPhone photo. Uh, like here, this is my blog, dirtbikeplanet.com. Uh, you know, that's my son right there. That's a stock photo. That's a stock photo. Um, you know, it's just a blend. That's my house right there. Uh, it's just a blend of, of iPhone photos and stock photos. And the reason that I like that is when you come to this website, it feels personable, it feels real, it feels authentic. Exactly. When somebody goes to a product review, like they can see I'm there holding the image due to professional and it just looks like the Amazon product. Exactly, photo. so if you are a professional photographer like Jim, don't be a professional photographer mm -hmm. when you're taking photos for your blog, okay? Get out the cell phone. Um, go put away the Nikon DSLR camera. Go put away the lenses and all the lighting and just get out your cell phone and take a real authentic picture. It'll come across, don't make it crummy. Um, these pictures are not bad pictures, you can see, but, but um, make them authentic, okay? So what do you do if you're writing a review for a product and you don't have it? Yeah, so well, with the product one, you can always use the Amazon product images yep. as part of the terms uh, for the Amazon affiliate program. If you're signed up as an Amazon associate, uh, you can use those product images if you're promoting that product in your post. But again, those are gonna look kind of spammy. It's not gonna prove to people that you're holding the product. A lot of times I like to just take a selfie. You know, if I'm doing a review of an external hard drive, I'll do a selfie like, if I don't <laughs> like it. And that's the front image on there. And then it's just so obvious that this is a real, honest, authentic person's review. But again, it's hard to do that for everything. Uh, yep. To have enough images for every single thing you could want to illustrate on your blog. And so, a balance for that. I've tried a lot of different stock photo websites. Uh, I mean, everything from iStock Photo to Pond5 to dozens of others. And I've even been a contributor to most of them on the photography side. And finally, I found one that I'm really happy with. Um, it's the least expensive option that we've found. Um, and what I like about it is it's unlimited. Exactly. You just get your subscription and you can do as much as you want to use yep. whenever you need a photo. So you don't have to be like, oh, I don't want to pay five bucks for this blog post. You can just do it once you have a subscription and it's, it's nice. And the cool thing about it is it really it costs about as much as between, depending on the photos you buy um, on a different site, about the cost of 10 to 20 photos, okay? Mm -hmm. And I mean, on one subscription, we can write hundreds of blog posts 
and we can down uh, you you actually download the images that's what's cool too it's you know you full you, resolution exactly so i can go on there i could go download 100 images in fact every time they update their catalog they send me an email mm -hmm. and they say hey we just added all these all these photos you want to go download them now uh -huh. Like, awesome. I can download their entire library if I want to. And you to. can keep them. Even after your subscription exactly. ends, you can mm -hmm. still use what you downloaded during time. So it's pretty cool. You can go to incomeschool.com slash stock, and we'll link you over to it. Uh, that's the one that we use for, like, everything. Mm -hmm. Their library isn't, I wouldn't say, as big as, as iStock Photo or anything like that, but I think it's adequate. And for the price I, that we pay, I'm very happy with yep. it. Um, sometimes I'll buy credits with Fotolia or I guess it's Adobe stock now or whatever, just for kind of casual use, but almost everything is just from the subscription. Uh, but again, as many just iPhone authentic photos as you can really makes a, a very big difference uh, yep. on the website. Now sizing the images is critical. Yep. It's critical. WordPress is not going to size your images for you. Even if you think it does. Even mm -hmm. if you go in and you say, you oh, I want this one to appear at, at 900. If not it's 4,000 pixels wide, that's still They had to the download images. all 4,000 pixels and it just displays it smaller. Yeah. So it makes your website slow as molasses. Yep. I rarely put an image on, on the blog that's over 200 kilobytes. Usually 100, 120 kilobytes. Uh, is a pretty good size. I do them about 920 pixels on the long edge, and that'll go about full width on a, on most WordPress themes if you have a sidebar. And that's a good, nice, nice sized images. Yeah. It looks pretty, uh, but it's not so huge that it's gonna make your website slow to load. Not sizing your images or sizing them improperly is the number one way to make your website load slowly. You yeah. have to resize them every single time. In fact, it's kinda cool, so whenever I upload new photos to um, any of the uh, the, work, the websites that I'm working on. I'll upload a full-size version, and by full-size I mean the, about 900 pixels wide, and I'll, I'll just, I'll title it whatever the title I want for that photo, and then hyphen large. Mm -hmm. And then I'll go make another version of the same photo, I'll... I'll, I'll um, thumbnails. The yeah, small. exactly. So for these featured images, for the thumbnails, I'll narrow it down even further to 300, about 350 pixels is what I usually do. Mm -hmm. And then I'll title that same title hyphen small. And so then whenever I'm looking for a featured image for a post, um, if I've got 100 images on my website, I can reuse some. Nobody's going to notice if yeah, you reuse it. So I'm it. just going to type in the search in my media library. There's a little search box. I'm just going to type in small. And it's going to pull up all of my images that have the word small in the mm -hmm. title. And I just pick my featured image from there. And the other thing that I wanted to add is that sometimes the images, uh, while it may not be as big of a deal to, you know, Google, Google can't read an image, it just knows that you have one on the page. Sometimes an image is the value that your website, that your page has. And so here's an example on a blog that Ricky's working on, cabinfreedom.com. I think it's the images that make this uh, this blog post important because I can see like, this is a dude who actually has an off-grid cabin, you know, and he's, this is the shower and how he built it. Like the images in this post are more important than the text is. Like just seeing these images, like, ah, oh, it just solves the problem. It totally explains the whole story on there. Now this I would say is fine. The number of images he has here. I wouldn't do more images than no, this. No. This is this is pushing the limits, and this is a very visual post, so it's good on this one. I, but if yeah. if you have too many images on a single post, again, I mean, when your when it, your page is 1.5 two megabytes to load the page, it's just mm -hmm. too slow. I would never put even this many images on an article that wasn't a how-to, very descriptive article. Mm -hmm. And yep. this is this is an appropriate amount, but sure. but any more than that, it's going to start making it slow. So that's a guide to images um, in WordPress for blogging. Again, to check out the company that we recommend, it's at incomeschool.com slash stock. And that is an affiliate uh, link. Uh, thank you to everybody who uh, uses the stuff that we recommend and actually use ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so I uh, hope you enjoy it. See you guys.